Here are tonight's winning Lotto America numbers here on TV 13. You're watching WHO TV 13 Des Moines. And now the news team that's making a difference in central Iowa. This is News Center 13. Good evening and thank you for being with us. The holiday weekend begins with violence. Police at the scene of a double stabbing at this hour on the northeast side. Late details with the Live Eye and News Center 13's Kelly Eckerman. We're obviously having difficulties with the audio from Kelly. We will hope to go back to her, but as we said, there has been a double stabbing at this hour on the northeast side, and there is one suspect in custody. A woman laying out here in the yard, and she had been very, very severely cut, uh, attacked by someone, and inside the house uh, was a man that is injured even more severely. Uh, both parties are still alive and uh, they've been taken to uh, the trauma center. Uh, we uh, are putting together statements and information on who might have done this. Uh, we think we have some pretty good information on that, and we're proceeding to try. And again, one suspect in custody, that double stabbing occurring this evening on the northeast side of Des Moines. An eight-month-old baby in critical condition tonight after a fire in her home. Authorities arrived at 1915 Pleasant and found a distraught mother with a badly burned baby girl in her arms. Little Crystal Flanders was rushed to Iowa Methodist with burns over about half of her body. Tonight, she is in critical condition. Fire investigators say the blaze may have begun in the victim's playpen. A two-year-old was playing nearby. The biggest travel weekend of the year is in full swing tonight. The Iowa State Patrol tonight says roads are reported in good condition, except for some slick, snowy spots remaining in the Algona area. Earlier today, a treacherous ride along interstates and other roads in the northern portion of Iowa. Numerous cars in the ditch. Fortunately, no one was hurt. And if you're traveling tonight or tomorrow and you have any questions about the roads, call the road condition hotline at 288-1047. Many of you made an all-important trip tonight to the grocery store. It's a last-minute Thanksgiving rush at local stores. Some people are looking for their favorite spice they forgot earlier this week, while others are just getting around to picking up their bird. These shoppers are under the gun. Many are picking up those last-minute items they have to have to make tomorrow's feast perfect. I uh, did most of my cooking last night, and I thought, oh, well, I'm almost done. So uh, I see that I wasn't almost done, so I come to the store and I can get the rest of it. So. Still others simply put the dirty job of shopping off until tonight. Well, I'm a professional procrastinator, I guess. You think it's going to have any effect on your turkey dinner? I don't think so. I've got about everything now. Obviously, they're buying more than just forgotten items. I think everybody's just so right. Everything's right. Of course, nights like this one are not just hectic for shoppers. Workers are in a frenzy as well. Oh, really busy. It's been really busy here. It's Thanksgiving because of the holiday. But even though lines were pretty long at the checkout tonight and aisles were pretty full, spirits were high. Typical of the night before a big holiday. And as a sign of the times, Hy-Vee is one of several grocery stores that will stay open for last-minute shoppers all day tomorrow. Well, we've apparently fixed our audio problems, and we can now go back to Kelly Ackerman at the scene of that double stabbing on the northeast side of Des Moines. Kelly? John, investigators are still here at the crime scene tonight, 1320 East Douglas. This is where two victims were found tonight, a man and a woman, both stabbed, both in critical condition tonight, being treated at Methodist Medical Center. Now, witnesses told police tonight that they heard a loud commotion. They went outside to find a woman, her throat slashed, lying in the driveway. When police responded to an emergency call, they went inside the home here to find a man, another stabbing victim. He also in very bad shape tonight. Now. Police believe they do have a suspect in custody. They are calling for a warrant at this time, just a few blocks away from the crime scene. They picked up a man who fit a description given to them by witnesses here. And at this hour, they are taking witnesses from the scene to try to get a positive ID on this suspect. Now, they are not releasing any names at this point, but we will, of course, keep you updated and bring you the latest from the scene. I'm Kelly Eckerman with the Live Eye. Okay, thank you very much, Kelly. In other news, President Bush tonight called on Soviet leader Gorbachev to work with him at next week's summit in Malta. Tonight's Thanksgiving Eve speech was the first ever nationally broadcast address from Camp David. I am reaching out to President Gorbachev 
asking him to work with me to bring down the last barriers to a new world of freedom. Let us move beyond containment and once and for all end the Cold War. Now, the president described next week's meeting as a time for exploration with real arms negotiations left for another summit next year. The shuttle is off for a Thanksgiving expedition atop tonight's newsreel. The shuttle Discovery lifted off and lit up the Florida sky this evening. The super secret mission will deploy a spy satellite. Just five minutes warning was given to the public and the media before liftoff. Turmoil in Lebanon. The newly elected president killed in a bomb blast today. He died in Beirut when a bomb went off as his motorcade passed. A dozen Green Berets got out of that San Salvador hotel today, ending a 28-hour standoff with leftist rebels. The standoff ended without confrontation. The rebels had slipped out of the hotel overnight. At daybreak, the Green Berets just walked away. A chain of protesters blocked the federal building in Los Angeles today. They opposed U.S. support of El Salvador in the wake of the deaths of five Jesuit priests. Critics claim government troops did the killing. Actor Martin Sheen was among the demonstrators. On Wall Street, the day before Thanksgiving, trade was moderate, the Dow up 17 points. The mommy track, it can be a blessing for parents trying to balance children and career, giving them flexibility. But the mommy track can also be a mommy trap for women trying to get ahead. Tonight, Anita Walker concludes her cover story on the roadblocks facing career mothers. I'm hiring a nanny tonight. She'll never be in the office again. Believe me, nothing's going to change. I'm totally on top of it. I need you to come with me to you Cleveland can't... Thursday to talk to the food chain. I'll be there. Absolutely. I can still count on you seven days a week, 48 oh, hours a day. Of course. I mean, I'm not going to turn into Irma Bombeck. In the movie Baby Boom, Diane Keaton's character watched her career fall apart after a baby came into her life. It's a fear of many career women turned mothers. When Cindy Reed Stewart came back to work after maternity leave at the Department of Education, she found her office had been moved. She felt threatened. Because it leaves you vulnerable to a certain extent, professionally and emotionally and other ways. Though it can be hard to put your finger on, many women feel their careers run into a brick wall once they become mothers. There's no doubt about it. I felt that discrimination when I was coming up through uh, uh, corporate structures. Lieutenant Governor Joanne Zimmerman does not like the term mommy track. I don't really like it because it sounds like there's a, a separate track for women going up the, the corporate ladder. Uh, although I think most women understand that there has been a separate track and we've been fighting it for years and years and years. It is um, another indication that uh, women have the babies and men make the rules. It's just that simple. Mary Grief is the first woman on the board of directors at The Principal, and she consults companies on coping with change in the workplace. She also does not like the term mommy track. Harassed parent track is probably a better title for what we're talking about. And she says it's time for companies to start looking for ways to accommodate family life and say goodbye to this old saw. Company comes first. We don't care what happens to your family. You must do this for the benefit of the company. That's out the window. That is completely gone. Grief says that goes for men and women. We're seeing a nationwide trend of people being more concerned about their family than, than just their job. For the health team, I'm Anita Walker. And Anita says with 90% of the workforce parents and a worker shortage expected by the year 2000, companies will be changing their attitudes toward parents in the workplace. Next from News Center 13, getting tough on the drunk drivers will have one bold idea. And you'll never guess what happened to the moose. A tasty update when we come back. It's a crackdown on the drunk driver and a campaign issue in the making. State Attorney General and probable candidate for Governor Tom Miller comes up with a, dr a drastic plan. Cut the legal alcohol limit in half from 0 .10 to 0 .05. For an average-sized man, that means you would be legally drunk and unfit to drive if you had just two and one-half drinks. Great for I would take the lead on, the, on drunk driving reform, particularly the .05, particularly with the Medical Society in Iowa endorsing this provision and taking a lead on it. It'd be good for Iowa to be in the leadership role. Miller's plan would give Iowa the toughest drunk driving laws in the nation. Bar owners tonight say the penalty is so harsh they would lose business. Well, believe it or not, the meandering moose has become a Thanksgiving meal. The famous wandering moose captured our attention for weeks until the animal was illegally killed in western Iowa. Tonight, the state has put the moose to good use by donating 184 pounds of moose meat to a Council Bluffs food pantry.
for distribution, and tomorrow dozens of needy people in Council Bluffs will have moose for Thanksgiving dinner. And another unusual story from the state files. A county engineer in hot water over the, the destruction of a bridge. The Hardin County supervisors today put off a move to fire County Engineer Rodney Velotho after some residents were outraged when the county engineer dispatched a crew to tear down an old bridge near Eagle City. The bridge was a popular fishing spot. The Hardin County supervisors will meet next week to consider Velotho's fate. The news gets unusual holiday time, it I guess. It certainly does. Check your travel plans with Gary Amble's latest forecast next. Plus, the trees of the season now on display still to come. And the garb of Thanksgiving's gone by later in the newscast. Stay with us. Yeah, this could be tricky tomorrow because we've just been told tomorrow we judge right. the winning right. poster I'm for this week. John and Kim are... What if we disagree? I don't know. I You'll guess have we'll to have be to have the tiebreaker. Winners, maybe? You'll be the tiebreaker. No, no, I can't do that. You two have to pick one out that you like. Okay. okay. Well, we'll, we'll see what This we is do. a good one tonight. Yeah, not a bad one. Let's uh, take this full screen now. This is Joseph Nyan. Joseph goes to St. Teresa's School here in Des Moines. Says, say no to drugs. He's got a lot of these drugs with this little stamp on top. It says, be smart, don't start. There's a guy down here with some sunglasses. Says, these pills make you feel really good. The other guy wisely says, no, I don't take drugs. Good idea. Well, for those of you folks who don't get moose for Thanksgiving, here's a picture of the turkey that's going to adorn a lot of tables. All the Iowa interstates, absolutely normal. And the other roads, you'll run into some troubles in north central Iowa on some secondary roads. Road report number 288-1047. We'll give you information on all the interstates and secondary roads across Iowa. Now, the current conditions at the 10 o'clock hour, not bad, still 19 degrees. A little bit chilly if you don't have a jacket. Went down after that. Lamoni coming in at 35 degrees, and it was 30s generally across the lower one half of the state of Iowa today. Radar summary: still a few snow flurries hanging around. A secondary front is already producing some light flurries across areas of extreme western Minnesota, southeast corner of North Dakota. All that will be traveling down our way, so our chances of flurries really not over yet. But for the most part, they are also a little patch of snow here by Chicago. But the heaviest snows expected to pound the eastern seaboard here. A little low pressure disturbance down in Tennessee will be riding out, and that'll be generating a lot of energy and a lot of snow showers for the east coast. One time through the satellite loop, there's this area right now. Watch as it travels all to the east. That's that big pocket of energy that will be slamming into the east coast. Behind it, we started to clear out the skies a little bit. That'll allow our temperatures to go straight down. 10 o'clock map position just still show a little bit of cloud cover over Iowa, but 24 hours from now, second front will come in. High pressure behind that means sunshine on your Thanksgiving day. Have to stretch to find a pick city all the way down to Poway, California. We're about the only part of the United States that will creep into the 70s tomorrow. Not a bad day with a high of 71 degrees. Our own forecast calls for the clear skies to remain. 13, the overnight low, shifting winds by morning. Tomorrow, your Thanksgiving day, mostly sunny skies, 32, so stay indoors. That'd be a good idea. Variable winds around 10, comfortably cool without a great deal of wind. By Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, 22 the low. Southeast winds will kick into gear. That means not as cold for an overnight low. Five-day outlook calls for a couple of nice ones on Friday and Saturday. Yes, indeed, John. It seems like the work week is cold, but the weekends, we squeeze out a couple of nice days. Saturday's high, 48. You have done an excellent job for a couple months now on that. I think it's about the last 24, 25 weekends. <laughs> oh, oh, that many. To be exact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Gary. WHO-TV, WHO-Radio, and KLYF-FM, all proud to help feed those in need this holiday season. It was a group effort in filling this year's Mayflower before it went on its voyage of Thanksgiving delivery. Area schools, high vs and just people who care to help carry huge boxes and overloaded bags of canned goods to the moving van today. Food pantry directors say this is the most food they've ever received from the Mayflower. Next up from New Center 13, the best Christmas trees anywhere. And the best Hawkeye ever to wear Celtic green. Jeff at the big board when we come back. If you're looking for some last-minute Christmas decorating ideas, the Festival of Trees at the Convention Center is a good place to start. The annual festival opening today, 81 decorated Christmas trees on display. Corporate sponsors already bought the trees to raise money for Blank Children's Hospital. But the trees will be on display through this weekend for everybody's enjoyment. Of course, we know we don't have to ask Jeff if he's ever seen that because right. he made it clear last night that he's <laughs> yeah. never but, been. But I'm going to this is going to be the time. year. I am. But yep. this would be first minute Christmas decoration. And for you, yes, that's <laughs> Definitely true. not last minute. All right, let's talk a little basketball. The semifinals of the Big Apple NIT held tonight in Madison Square Garden. St. John's against the Paul. 
in the opener. Here's Boo Henry of St. John's. He's stripped of the basketball by Melvon Foster. He gets it ahead to Kevin Holland for the jam. Blue Demon's looking good, but Harvey made up for this because down by one with five seconds left. Here comes Boo Harvey, puts it up, hits it off balance. St. John's wins it 53-52. They're in the final. Second semifinal, number one Vegas against Kansas. Vegas, uh, Travis Bison feeds Barry Young. He goes in for the dunk, but Kansas ran their half-court offense to perfection. Here's Ricky Callaway. He'll find Mike Maddox down low. Maddox scores. They pass the ball well. Kansas wins 91-77. They've now beaten number one and number two so far in the Big Apple NIT. Last night in the NBA, the Boston Celtics were in Indiana to take on the Pacers. Jimmy Rogers, the former Hawkeye star, on the sidelines, trying to find some way to coach his team to win. Before the game, we talked with him about his son, Matt, the present Iowa quarterback. And, you know, he plays on a young football team, uh, the Iowa team, and uh, they're coming along. They're going to be a good, solid team in the future, and I, I'm very happy for Matt because he has been able to accomplish some things as a young player this year, and, and uh, I know he wouldn't agree. Uh, he, he thinks wins and losses, and that's it, which uh, I like that, but, uh, but I'm proud of him. There's no question about that. Now, also on the Celtics is former Iowa star Kevin Gamble. He's currently playing a key role for the Celts. Last night wasn't a great game, though. This was his only basket of the night, and he talked about life in the NBA. It really hasn't been adjusted for me. I, I felt that I was ready when I first came out of college. Um, you know, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't stick with Portland. Um, you know, went to the CBA, worked on my game, and then you know, then Boston picked me up. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too many big adjustments I had to make. Just, just working hard and, and doing what I have to do. Tonight in Pro Hoops, the Celtics got a win. They beat Houston. It was Philadelphia defeating Miami. Cleveland beat New York. Denver over Minnesota. And Milwaukee beat Atlanta 118 to 100. The Iowa Girls Athletic Union has released its preseason rankings for both five and six player teams. Here's a look at the top 10 in each role. <laughs> that about a 95 it has a great beat action on ice tonight in the nhl the montreal canadians were in philadelphia to meet the flyers here's montreal coach pat burns looking on interestedly now philly comes on the power play mike bullard with a centering pass to rick tuckett he flips it in it's 1-0 flyers and they go on to win 5-1 nhl scoreboard tonight quebec and hartford quebec's a winner buffalo beat the rangers new jersey over pittsburgh six to three Washington beat the Islanders 5-3, and Minnesota just wound up a victory over the Toronto Maple Leafs by a score of 6-3, almost said Blue Jays. Hey, have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Same You're going to you. be here tomorrow, well, aren't you? We'll, all, we'll, all be we'll have an okay Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> all dressed up for the traditional Thanksgiving when we come back. An update now on our top story with Kelly Ackerman in the Live Eye. Kelly? Kim, we are still at the scene of a double stabbing. A man and a woman both found stabbed here at 1320 East Douglas, both in critical condition tonight. Now, a suspect is in custody. No arrest yet, but police do expect one before the night is out. Also, they have just obtained a search warrant for this residence. They are now searching for a weapon. We will, of course, keep you updated on this double stabbing on the east side tonight, tomorrow on News Center 13. I'm Kelly Eckerman with the Live Eye. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Finally, a holiday wake-up weather. Yes, and, uh, the winds will swing up back to the southeast by morning, a hint of warmer weather to come, but not by tomorrow morning, mostly clear and cold, 15. Whoa, finally. <laughs> We're going to wish you a happy Thanksgiving with students who are giving thanks and saying prayers the old-fashioned way. That's how the 220 students celebrated Thanksgiving today at St. Augustine School. Faculty, parents, and relatives there as well as the kids dressed up for a 1600 pilgrims feast. During Mass, the students uh, gave thanks for all the canned goods collected for those in need. And then everyone headed home for the holiday. 17th century brought alive for us tonight.